Hello guys, this is Dev Tigris, and welcome to another episode of JavaScript HTML5 Game Development Tutorial number 6. And this tutorial is going to be mostly about theory, but we'll slowly transition into the code. And at this point I feel like we need to talk about the access of the tiles from our tile set in the world, in the game. And I created this diagram to represent the type of data we're going to be working with. And here you can see this is our entire map. Of course, I minimized it to 4x4 four four. in a real world scenario. This would be much bigger, hundreds and hundreds of tiles in width and height. But I minimized it in order to demonstrate the basic idea of how to access each tile and also, more importantly, how to make the mouse coordinates recognize which tile it's currently in as far as the mouse cursor goes. So, for example, if our mouse cursor is on 6 or 10, how do we actually map the mouse coordinates into this square space? Because these are a little different. One thing you have to notice is that the zero-based index, this means that even though our for loops rendering the map as a square with one four squares uh, in width and four in height. And we're doing that through for loops, as you will see and as you have already seen in my previous tutorial. But the data itself is always linear. It's stored in an array. We've already seen this happen in my previous tutorial. And this zero is basically this zero right here. It just rendered in a certain way using this box. So the main problem here, how do we convert from this box back into our linear array? And reversal of that, how do we convert from linear array back into the box to access the square in whatever way we need to. You will notice that converting from the square coordinate system, which is our game world, into our index, which is linear, is using one process and converting it back from linear to square using a very similar but slightly different process. One thing I want you to notice is that this square box also has a zero index based coordinate system but not only for the tiles, but also for width and height dimensions. What I mean by this is that if you have an X coordinate, it starts with zero. So this is a tile at zero, zero. And five is a tile at one, one. The reason that we start with zero and not one as traditionally used in coordinate systems it's really just a small difference because it saves us a lot of trouble. Well, maybe not a lot, but a little, for sure. Because had we started with one, traditionally, then we would always have to subtract one from our final result. But if we start from zero, the way mathematical formulas work in mapping and calculations, it's just easier for us to start with zero because it removes that extra step of subtracting one from our result. And you will see the meaning of this in a much clearer way once we actually start implementing this. But anyone who created RPG or platformer games from scratch has realized that it's always easier to just stick to the zero based index. Now, let's imagine for a moment that we have a tile of arbitrary dimensions, 16 by 16 pixels. And each tile on our tile map would be in those dimensions. Let's not forget that there's also a mouse coordinate system, which is looking something like this. We have an X coordinate system and a Y. So having said this, if our tile is 16 by 16, 
and let's take these two tiles here and we'll see that this place in the mouse coordinate system is about 32 pixels and 32 pixels down on y-axis now that we know this let's make an assumption that we have our mouse cursor hovering somewhere around here 55 pixels on x-axis and 26 pixels on the y-axis in screen space of course and it so happens that doing that would have hovered the mouse over the tile with index 7 and it would look something like this so the question is then how do we make a leap from our mouse coordinates into the coordinates of the square map and the answer is that we need to do some basic mathematical calculations I will use this opportunity to describe three different coordinate system translations one will be switching from mouse coordinates into the tile space on our map the second will be taking the map coordinates that we have just calculated and generating the index value of 7 based on the value of 3 and 1. And the third calculation is the reversal of the previous one that I just described in which we will take the digit 7 from the index of the map and We'll use only this value alone without anything else other than the width um, of the tile map in order to go back and reverse the process and turn 7 into x equals 3 and y equals 1. So we'll go over all of these important coordinate transformations and once we get them figured out we'll be able to accomplish so much more with our new RPG platform engine that we're building. And the first thing I want you to take a look at is the mouse to tile map coordinates. And that means that we're taking these values and trying to decide which tile it belongs to on both axes X and Y so let's take a look at the first example tile map X in these coordinates we calculated by taking the mouse position at X which is 52 and dividing it by 16 which is the width of the tile that we have decided on earlier and that will result in 3.25 the interesting thing about this is that between these sides here there's 3.1, 3.2, 3.5, 3.9 somewhere over here and all of these values will be basically 3 because they fall into the 3 this is the third column well the fourth but we're counting it from 0 but you get the understanding of that and basically we don't really need 3.25 we just need 3 so how would we solve that problem well I'll tell you a secret there is a JavaScript function called floor it's attached to the math object and it's already done for us we can start using it and all we need to do is pass the result 3.5 through that function and what floor does it takes out everything after the dot and turns it to zero so basically we get our three and this happens no matter how many which digits we have after the dot so for example even 399 would have resulted to three in a way we're kind of flooring it down to the lowest digit and that's basically that's what this function does and we want to do the same calculation for the 26 
So what do we do? We repeat exactly the same thing. And tile map Y will equal 26 divided by 16 tile map. In this case, we get 1.625. And again, we have to run it through the floor function to get 1, because we don't really need this after the decimal point. We just need the 1. As you can see, doing these calculations results exactly in getting us the 3 and 1, which is where this 7 resides. They intersect at 7. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here. Now, as a bonus, I want to also introduce the ceiling function. We have floor, and it goes down to 1, but had we used the ceiling function, it would have turned out to be 2, because ceiling is the ceiling of 1, and it rounds it up to the next greater value. And again, floor does the opposite. It rounds down to the lowest value, which is 1. We're not going to be using ceiling function at all in this engine, but it's nice to know that they exist. And it's really nice to understand what they actually do with the numbers. Now, we have just successfully identified tile map coordinates 3 and 1, but we still don't have 7. And that's task for our next step, which is tile map coordinates to array index conversion. So we simply want to get 7 from x axis 3, y axis 1, as we have just calculated that position with our mouse. Let's get the 7. And in order to do that, there is a simple formula. It is tile map y 1 times tile map width, which is 4, plus tile map x, which is 3. And plugging these values in into this formula, we get 1 times 4 plus 3 equals 7. And that is basically how you would get any tile index from these x and y coordinates. In our next calculation, we're going to do just the opposite of what we have just done in our previous step. So we'll reverse that operation and by specifying the index 7, we'll get back our coordinates. And these two steps are very important and are frequently used in any platform engine. So it's really important to know them. Interestingly enough, we will not be able to get away with simple multiplication or division in this case. And to reverse the digit from the, our linear array data, we need to use the modulo operator, also known as the remainder operator. And in order to demonstrate it, let's get first the tile map's x position from simply using the 7. And we're going to use 7 and modulo operator. And then we're going to feed it our tile map width, which is 4. And this will result in 3, which is exactly what we want. But how does the modulo know to do that? Well, it's the remainder. So it's almost like a division operator, except it gives us the remainder and incidentally that remainder turns out to be the x coordinate in the map space what's even more interesting is that in order to get one from our seven index now going back for the tile map y coordinate system we do not use the modular operator we actually have to use a division and it looks like this. Again, we're going back to the math floor function. We discussed it in earlier steps. So you already know what it does. And we take 7 and simply divide it by the 4, which is the width of the map. 
and pass it to the floor as 1.75 and eventually it results in 1. So we have just made a round trip from mouse coordinates to square coordinates then we identify the index and then we use that index to go back and figure out what the original x and y position in map space was so that concludes our calculations here I'm really glad that I was able to make this tutorial and explain all these calculations this is probably the most mathematically intensive tutorial so far in terms of platform game development but it's going to be incredibly useful as we move forward and so these operations are very basic and they're used a lot in development of a platform game or an RPG for example and so because they're going to be used so frequently in the future I developed these JavaScript functions that do all of these calculations for us so we don't have to do any of this coding and in the future when I use when I need to grab like 7 or some other index I'll simply use these functions called xy2i which returns the i index based on the x and y in tile map space and the second function i to xy it takes i the 7 index in this case and returns an array which is a xy pair that basically tells you which coordinates that index in the linear space belongs to so we're going to be using these two functions from now on and I think this concludes this tutorial I'm really glad that I was able to put all of this information out there so we can finally start moving on to developing something really exciting in my next tutorial so thanks for watching guys if you like my tutorials please support me or follow me in these ways that you're seeing on the screen right now and I hope to hear from you soon. I will see you guys in my next tutorial where we will continue our journey developing a platform engine in JavaScript and HTML5.